A few weeks ago, I made a video about how cheap PC gaming has gotten in 2023. And I was amazed at the PC I was able to put together for under 800 US dollars. As amazing as that deal was, I feel like I should be able to beat it. So that's exactly what I did. I set out to create a PC strictly for gaming. And for those of you that haven't watched the video, the goal of it was to show you that you don't need a thousand or two thousand dollars to game in 2023. That build included a Ryzen 5 5500 with an RTX 2060 Super. It could game at 1440p resolution and it only cost about $730 to put together. Would you believe me if I told you I built a better system for less money? Let me show you the all important benchmarks first. Then we can talk about the parts. I ran four different games for these benchmarks and I did it between 1440p resolution and 1080p resolution because this system can game at 1440p, but if you want super high frame rates, 1080p is still the way to go. First game up was Apex Legends. I really love this game and I keep going back to it even though it's been out for a few years now. I played it on high settings for both resolutions and at 1440p, I achieved 128.1 FPS average and 84.8 for the 1% low. At 1080p resolution, this increased to 166.7 FPS average and 110.5 for the 1% low. Now there's no ray tracing or DLSS or anything. Apex is pretty much just raw performance. What you see on the screen is what you get. So if you set it on high presets, this is what you could expect. The next game up was Fortnite, where I ran high resolution once again, and TSR was set to low. I didn't run with Nanite, ray tracing, or any of the special features on the game, and it decided to run at 87% render resolution on its own. At 1440p, we saw 113.1 FPS average and 68.7 1% low. Dropping the resolution down to 1080p saw 150.3 FPS average and 78.4 1% low. As you can see, 1080p nets a really good FPS and 1440p is not too bad either. If you want even higher FPS than that, you can drop your settings down to something like medium, those competitive settings, and you can achieve an even higher frame rate. I decided to throw Cyberpunk 2077 into the mix because it's almost like the modern day crisis. I ran it on high settings once again, and at 1440p resolution, I was able to achieve 74.8 FPS average with 55.4 1% low. On 1080p, I saw 103.1 FPS with 63.5 for the 1% low. Even on Cyberpunk, we achieved over 60 FPS, and this is almost like the modern day crisis if you remember that back in the day. Now I did cheat a little bit. I used DLSS on the quality setting for both tests, just because I thought about it. And if you're gonna be playing Cyberpunk, I highly suggest you use DLSS anyways, and the card supports it, so why not use it? The next game up is Warzone 2.0. I set everything to the balance preset, which actually enables FSR out of the box. So I disabled that and enabled the DLSS portion of it instead. I also set it to the quality setting, just like in Cyberpunk. And these are the results I achieved. I got 103.3 FPS average and 63 for the 1% low when I played on 1440p. And at 1080p resolution, I achieved 116.6 FPS average and 79.1 1% low. I was kind of intrigued by that. It really wasn't much of a difference between 1080p and 1440p. I'm not sure what was going on there, but I double checked all the settings and they were the exact same across both tests. So I guess it's just that poorly optimized. Now that you saw the benchmarks, I bet you're curious as to what parts I put into this PC to achieve those high frame rates. I pulled out all the stops to complete this build. I got discounted new parts, I got killer deals on used parts, and I even got a couple parts for free to keep me within my slim budget I created. The CPU, motherboard, RAM, and storage drive are all brand new components. I couldn't find anything on the used market that even came close in value or performance. The CPU is the Ryzen 5 5600. With six cores and 12 threads and a boost clock of 4.4 gigahertz, it's the perfect CPU for any gaming PC. Of course, this means for the motherboard, I would either want to go with B550 or X570. Now, X570 is over-engineered and overpriced for this build, so B550 was the obvious choice. And before you ask, B450 and X470 
You can usually find those on the used market. However, the prices are not as good as what new motherboards in the B550 class are currently. So I scrapped that idea. I went with the ASRock B550 Phantom Gaming 4 AC. It's a full-size ATX motherboard. It's got plenty of fan headers, USB 3.0, tons of rear port connections. The only thing I didn't like is it doesn't have a built-in IO shield, but for 110 bucks, I really can't complain. And it does have built-in Wi-Fi, which is always a benefit. I've never used RAM from Team Group before. I've used their SSDs in the past and I've had good luck. So I figured, why not? I went with 16 gigabytes of T-Force Delta RGB RAM at 3200 megahertz speed. Pretty standard stuff. And with the extra two DIMM slots, I've got room for expansion. Storage was easy since there's tons of options and prices have dropped insanely low. I grabbed this crucial P3 NVMe SSD for 50 bucks from Best Buy. This is the one terabyte model and it's PCI 3.0. Still plenty fast for this build. They had it in store and it was a $10 discount. So the other night while I was gaming, I snagged it and then picked it up the next morning for 50 bucks. I did get a few parts for free to help keep my costs down. The case and the CPU cooler were gifted to me by a friend of mine and he was just gonna throw them away anyways. So I told him I'd clean them up and I used them in my build. They turned out good as new. I didn't include their price in my breakdown because plenty of times I've had the chance to pick up cases for super cheap or even free. So there's deals out there that you can find. Also, you don't have to buy an aftermarket cooler either. The Wraith Stealth that AMD provides with the Ryzen 5 CPUs will be enough to get you started, but I wouldn't stick with it for too long. The case I'm using is the Corsair 220T RGB. It has three RGB fans and a mesh front panel with this weird diamond shaped design, but it does come with tempered glass, the three RGB fans, and it's got a smaller footprint compared to some ATX size chassis. I'm really happy with it and it fits all my components perfectly. The CPU cooler is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition. It's all blacked out on the front here. It's got like a brushed aluminum look. It's got plenty of cooling for our 5600 and it's got an RGB fan on it. Now the downside is it's a 12 volt non-addressable RGB fan, not the five volt addressable ones like the rest of the fans in the case. So it's kind of stuck on rainbow puke right now. You could set it to a permanent color, but it doesn't have that cool effect that some of the more higher end coolers have. But it was free, so I can't complain. Since I got most of the core components out of the way, the only things I had left were the GPU and the power supply. They kind of go hand in hand because depending on what GPU you select, that will dictate your power supply needs. So I didn't choose a very power hungry GPU. I didn't need a very high end power supply. I've been surfing used market sites a lot lately for GPUs because that's where you find the best deals. And as I said before, new prices still aren't really good on GPUs. Used is the way to go, and this proves it. I frequently browse sites like eBay, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and recently I found my way over to a little site that you might never even heard of. It's called Jawa.gg. They've created a community-driven marketplace for gamers to buy and sell their gear. Their website launched in August of 2021, so they're still fairly new. That might be why you've never heard of them. Jawa is where I picked up the graphics card and the power supply for this build. This PC is sporting an EVGA RTX 3060 XC Gaming. This is the 12 gigabyte version of the 3060, by the way, not the eight gig scam version. Take a guess at how much I picked this GPU up for. Go ahead, I'll wait. $240 plus shipping. That's right, that's it. That thing was supposed to be $330 MSRP. I got it for under MSRP and the card is in perfect shape. It wasn't mined on, it wasn't anything. The guy pulled it out of his son's gaming PC. What a killer PC for his son. I wanna know what he upgraded to. The power supply is an ASUS Tough Gaming 650B, which is a 650 watt, 80 plus bronze rated power supply. It's got plenty of power to handle our RTX 3060 or even some upgrades in the future. This cost me $40. The only downside is the power supply's cables are non-modular, which means you can't unplug any of the ones you don't need. So I had to stuff all the extra cables down in the basement of this really tiny case. I got some pretty good deals on Jawa, if I do say so myself. In fact, if you wanna check out Jawa's website and see what kind of deals you can swipe, I'll leave a link below that'll take you right to them. Now, I do have one downside to Jawa's website, and that's that all buyers must be located in the United States. Well, kind of. You have to at least provide a United States shipping address. They have something on their website talking about freight forwarding, stating international buyers are allowed to purchase on Jawa if they provide a US shipping address and pay with a US-based payment source. 
buyers must get the seller's permission before purchasing if they intend to use a forwarding service. So you technically don't have to be located in the United States, but it seems like such a hassle to have to send the item to a third party shipper who will then ship it to you overseas, and then you're just overpaying anyways. So I see the point, but unfortunately for right now, Jawa's services are limited to the United States. Sorry to you overseas viewers, you'll have to find your own site. I'm really happy with the price I paid for this build. The total cost came out to 644 US dollars. Using a combo of new and used parts, I was able to stretch my budget and get the best performance per dollar for my PC. I highly suggest that you all do the same for your next build. Now, if you like saving money and you wanna get the most performance for your dollar, you might wanna subscribe down below because I frequently do videos just like this one to help you with your PC building. We do everything from hardware reviews to how-to videos to full-out PC builds just like this one. So make sure you come back to check out what we've got planned next because things can only get better from here. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.